Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy. This is the um, Buck Marksman 829 Marksman Elite, uh, which is a, a limited edition version of a knife I've reviewed previously, the, the, the plain Buck Marksman. Um, and I want to thank very much my viewer Josh for sending this guy along. He saw my review of the original Buck Marksman and uh, picked this guy up, which actually fixes a couple of the issues I have with the original, which is a very nice thing. Uh, and so that's great. And then, of course, uh, just to highlight the weirdness of this knife, um, this little guy is uh, designed by G&G &G Hawk, Grant and Gavin Hawk, and uh, it's a cool knife in a lot of ways. Uses this weird back strap locking mechanism, which secures the blade by using this little strap which grabs onto the thing there. And so it opens and closes very rapidly as a very cool, free, spinning sort of action. Um, but anyways, nice knife. Uh, and so, given that I've reviewed the Marksman before, I'm actually just going to focus here on what has changed um, on this knife relative to the production version, and then finally let you know the price, this guy runs about 180 bucks, which is about 80 bucks more than the original. So uh, there you go. Let's just talk about what's good in the changes and what are bad in the changes, and then I'll give my final thoughts here. So on the good side, the, the positive changes that they've made here are that the steel is different. Um, originally, the steel was 154 cm and a sort of satiny, machiney finish, more like this guy here. And 154 cm is a solid performer, but this steel now is S90V, which is a top-of-the-line steel, and it's heat-treated by Paul Bose, who is a top-of-the-line heat-treater. And overall, this is a very, very impressive knife for it. The, the steel on this is great. It's solid, it's really incredible, and it's way above the average for Buck, and frankly, above the average for most people. So, the steel on this is now great. The other thing, and this seems like a little thing, but it's actually a really big one, is that they have changed one of my biggest gripes with the original, which was this really sharp jimping up here. On the original, they were cutouts, sort of crenellations along the side of this little tab here on both sides, and those, although they certainly made it easier to grip this little bar, um, Practically speaking, mostly what they did is dug into your hand and ate at your pocket. The fact that this now has gone to a smooth model where it's just smooth around the outside, there's still plenty of place to get in here and grab, and you can see they've even added a little groove there in the bottom, it means that it, it works functionally just as well. But you know what? It's also great in the pocket and very nice. So I like that very much. The other thing that's good, although almost pretty ridiculous, is this. This is the box that this knife came in. Here, uh, I'll use the knife for scale here. And what the heck, a Spydecodelica for scale, because, you know, why not? But this is a huge freaking box, and it's full of all kinds of certificates of authenticities and, you know, stuff. I don't even know what that is, but it certainly falls under the veil of stuff. And on the side here, they've got the full specifications burned in. This box is... Honestly, a little ridiculous, but uh, it is certainly something. Uh, and so, uh, those are the three big changes and improvements. Um, it comes in a huge vault-like wooden box. Uh, it fixed the biggest issue with the original, which was this jimping right along the side here. And they've moved to a really top-of-the-line sort of steel with a top-of-the-line heat treat. Uh, let's talk about what's gone downhill, because sadly, some things have gone downhill here. So on the bad side, um, first off, this is a matter of opinion more than anything, but I don't like fullers on blades. They just tend to mix whatever you were cutting yesterday with whatever you're cutting today. So I'm not a big fan of them adding one in here. I mean, okay, it looks different, whatever, but it still bugs me a little bit. The other thing that bugs me more than a little bit is this hole spacing here, because they missed one. They have two holes and then another one with room for the one in the middle. But they didn't freaking put it in there. I thought that was a QC fail at first, but then I look at the box here and we can see... That right there, that same hole is missing. So they intended to, to, to do that. I, I don't know why, but it drives me up a wall. So, you know, that that's a nitpick. But why, guys? Why, Buck? Why? Um, anyways, neither here nor there. Next thing that bugs me a little bit, there were a couple of regressions, so to speak, from the original. Um, a limited edition piece should always be better than the original piece it's based on. Every aspect of it, functionality, fit, finish, all of that, should be massively improved. Unfortunately, on this knife, that's not the case. For instance, the clip on this particular knife is not very good. With this texturing on the side, it has a tendency to grab the pocket a little bit, and it's overly tight. It's hugely tight. This is one of the tightest pocket clips I ever dealt with. It'll keep the knife in your pocket 100%, but holy crap, it's going to take your pocket with you. So that's kind of crazy. I, I don't love the clip here. Other things, some of the details they added for the limited edition model are not super compelling. For instance, they've now serrated the back of the knife. That's weird. 
I mean, maybe it adds a little bit of texturing, but I don't feel like this knife was under-textured to start with. Then the, this inlay here, the carbon fiber honestly just doesn't match all that well. If you're going to do a limited edition and you're going to do a fancy inlay, do it really, really well, and they haven't. Because you can see there are gaps between the inlay and the metal here. And over here, the in inlay is differently deep in different places on the knife here. Here, there's an area where the carbon fiber was just rounded off altogether. And again, you can see the depth of the inlay varies. The inlays just aren't all that well done relative to inlays coming from a lot of other companies. And if this is your limited edition, you need to be at the top of the game. Um, the next thing is the pivot collar on this guy is, well... <clears throat> kind of weird because it's not actually a pivot collar. You can see here there is a pivot, but this is just a screw. And then this little area is milled in there. So it's supposed to look like there's a pivot collar, but it doesn't look like there's a pivot collar. It just looks, it's kind of like one of those shirts where you've got the tie like printed onto the t-shirt along with the, 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 the bow tie and whatnot. I, <clears throat> no, if you're going to put a pivot collar, put one in there. And if you're not, don't fake it. Don't pretend you've got a pivot collar. It's just, that's cheapy. I don't get it. And then finally, maybe the biggest issue Issue with this knife that I didn't have on either of the two I handled previously is that the blade is constantly uh, developing blade play here. This is a knife that I have repeatedly tightened it. In fact, I tightened it in between the, my filming the introduction and talking about the good here. And I used Loctite, but still this blade repeatedly keeps coming loose. It's absolutely crazy. Um, just a couple of flips and you're already starting to develop horizontal blade play. I don't know what the issue is there. I don't know what part of this is making that happen, but whatever it is, it's really unpleasant, and it's not something I dealt with previously. So that's the bad to it, is that that little side-to-side -side pivot loosening blade play thing is not something I saw in the previous models. The fake pivot collar doesn't really rub me the right way. The inlays just aren't really well enough done to make it limited edition. Um, there's no love for the clip, at least on this particular model, and the fuller and the asymmetrical holes drive me a little crazy, but that may be more a matter of taste. So let's talk about the final conclusion here. So look, final conclusion here, I love the Buck Moxman very much as a design. I mean, I made this clear in my original review. I think it, it is great, and it has a lot that it brings to the table. And indeed, this limited edition makes two substantial improvements. It has a great steel. The first steel was fine, don't get me wrong, but this is a great steel, and then it removes the damn jimping along the side of here, which was a big issue with the original Moxman. And so in that way, they have improved the Moxman in this limited edition. But unfortunately, it feels a little bit off still, this limited edition does. Because generally, a limited edition knife is a way for you to show off. It's a way for you to showcase the best of what you can do. It's a way for Buck to say to fans who have fallen in love with the Moxman, you know what? I know you love that knife. I'm going to give you one you're going to love even more. We're going to make one that's way better. And usually this involves not only using your very best in materials, but your best finishing, your best construction. And unfortunately, if you think about it in that way, this knife comes up short. And it really kind of makes me feel like maybe Buck just isn't ready to compete on that higher end yet. Because although the materials are definitely better, the added details are underdone. And so it ends up feeling kind of like a compromise in some ways relative to the production model. I mean, you get some improvements, but you also get some reductions in quality. The original handle, frankly, I liked a little bit better because that uniform black, although it was fine, it didn't have the fit and finish issues in the carbon fiber, and it didn't have this stupid fake pivot ring, and it didn't have, for whatever reason, this auto-loosening pivot, which is seriously ugly. And, you know, so this is a knife that has some improvements, and functionally it's about the same, but it's a little less nice overall than I feel like the original production version was if you accept these two improvements. And that's the very last thing that a limited edition should be, is a compromise. A limited edition should feel like a serious improvement in all counts over the production version, and unfortunately, this one doesn't. And so, for me at least, this is absolutely a miss. Um, to pay 80 bucks more for this, although these are two nice improvements just doesn't quite feel right. And so, although I love the idea very much, and I love when makers do limited editions, I think it's a beautiful thing. And I do hope that Buck keeps pushing their envelope and really does amp that quality up in the future. But for now, I gotta say, although I love the Marksman, the limited edition Marksman is a knife that's got some big pros and some big improvements, but it's also got some big cons and it's got a big price tag. And so only you gonna know if you're gonna wanna give this particular Marksman a, uh, well, give it a shot. Get it? Uh...
anyways, so that, that's kind of where I land. I, I love the idea of it, but the execution fell a little bit short. But still, thank you, Josh, very much for sending this along and for confirming that the Marksman would be wholly better without that damn jimping. So uh, there you go. Hope this has been interesting to you that I hit the mark here and that you have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.